operating statement. I hereby declare this meeting of the Howell Township Planning Board to be open, adequate notice having been given, pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act in the following manners. First, on January 5th, 2024, a copy of said notice was emailed to the Asbury Park Press and the Star Ledger. Second, on January 5th, 2024, a copy of said notice was hand delivered to the clerk of the Township of Howell. Third, on January 5th, 2024, said notice was posted in the office of the planning board and on the bulletin board in the Howell Township Municipal Building, 4567 Route 9, Howell Township, New Jersey. In accordance with the Fire Prevention Code and your safety, please be advised that this facility is designed with two emergency exits which are at the front and rear of the meeting room. Furthermore, smoking is not permitted in the municipal building. Please take note that this meeting is being videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Township TV 77. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Cristiano has been excused. Mr. Greenfield? Here. Mr. Leggio has been excused. Mr. Tannenhaus has been excused. Mr. Withers? Present. Mr. Rebell? Here. Councilwoman Fisher? Here. Ms. Pike has been excused. Mr. Carbonic has been excused. Chairman Husser has been excused. And we have uh, Vice Chairman Mercer? Here. You do have a quorum, thank you. Okay, I want to um, rise and um, um, have the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for our men, men and women uh, for, for here and abroad. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, so we have to prove, first of all, prove the minutes from May 9th, 2024. Greenfield, myself, and Ms. Fisher. Need a motion? Yes. Motion to accept uh, minutes from May 9th meeting. Second. Okay. Mr. Greenfield? Yes. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. And Chairman Mercer? Yes. Motion carries, thank you. Okay, second one is June. We need to approve the regular meeting from June 6, 2024. Myself, Withers, Rebel, and Ms. Fisher. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from the meeting of June 6th. Second. I'm sorry, who was that, Mike? Yep. Thank you. Mr. Withers? Yes. Mr. Rebel? Yes. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. And Chairman Mercer. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Resolutions. I'm sorry. Correspondence. I have a letter from Robert Simon. He is the attorney for case number SP1105 AAVRHW Property LLC. He's asked that this matter be carried to the September 19th meeting of the board and that an announcement be made tonight that no further notice is required of the applicant. And he also gave the board an extension of time to hear this application through September 30th, 2024. All right, I'll make the formal announcement. The uh, application of SP1105 AAVRHW Property LLC of Victory Road will be carried to the board's regularly scheduled September 19th, 2024 meeting at 7 p.m. in this meeting room. All documents are still available within the town hall during at normal business hours. I also have a letter from John Jackson. He is the attorney for case number SP1123, SMC Properties, LLC, which is also on tonight's agenda. And they have some work, I guess, they need to do after their technical review meeting. So he asked that this application also be carried to September 19, 2024, with no further notice. And they're good on time for this. All right, I'll make the formal announcement. The application of SP1123 SMC Properties LLC will be carried to the board's regularly scheduled September 19th, 2024 meeting at 7 p.m. in this meeting room. 
all documents are available in town hall during normal business hours. And last but not least, I sent out three land use ordinances that were introduced by the council on Tuesday night, and they are up for public hearing and adoption at the council's August 20th meeting. So we need to comment on them for consistency with the master plan. I don't know, I guess. So, Mr. Chair, I can jump in on this. There are three ordinances, 2430, 2431, 2432. All three of them are, I mean, Austin, I could do all three at the same time because they basically all have to do with the same thing, but they're separate ordinances. Um, all three of them have to do with the governing body allowing farms to host events. So one is where they're allowed to do it in terms of like the zones that are allowed. There's also the parameters associated with the permit process versus the approval process, if it's a minor event versus a major event. And the last one is uh, just simple definitions, but all three have to do with farms allowing these events to take place. In the last re-exam, if you guys recall, we did recommend that the governing body review and basically consider allowing farms to host these kinds of events, which would generate revenue for them and allow them to remain farms. So all three of these ordinances that were introduced this past week by the governing body and up for public hearing and at their next meeting are consistent with the last master plan because the governing body, like this board found, yes, this recommendation was appropriate and the governing body obviously chose to implement that recommendation. So I would uh, recommend that the board offer a determination that it's consistent with the master plan. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll just have to have a separate vote for each ordinance for the record. So. Okay. All right. Uh, so as Jen said, the explanation is the same for all three. So. Do you want to go to the first one? The first one is Ordinance okay. 2430, and that was the definitions. Okay. We'll make a motion. Right? Mm -hmm. I need a motion and a second. A second. Brian Greenfield was the motion, and Mike was the second. Yes. Mr. Greenfield? Yes. Mr. Withers? Yes. Mr. Rebell? Yes. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. And Chairman Huss uh, Mercer? Yes. Motion carries. The second ordinance was Ordinance 2431, which was to add the events to uh, certain zones, I believe. Hold on. 31 is, <clears throat> is the permit type, whether okay. it's major versus minor. Thank you. Okay. Make a motion. A uh, motion. I'll second. So Mer motion, Mr. Withers second. Mm -hmm. Mr. Greenfield? Yes. Mr. Withers? Yes. Mr. Rebell? Yes. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. And Chairman Mercer? Yes. Motion carries. And the third one is Ordinance 2432. That's identifying the zones that it's permitted in. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Make a motion. I'll second. A motion and a second. Mr. Withers? Or yes. I'm sorry, Mr. Greenfield? Yes. Mr. Withers? Yes. Mr. Rebell? Yes. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. And Chairman Mercer? Yes. Motion carries. And that is all the correspondence I have. I know you want to keep saying Chairman Huzar. I did. I'm so, so used to it. Sorry. This is my first time, so. <laughs> You're doing fine. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll go through the resolutions. Some we can approve, some we can't. Um, first one, case number SD3003CI, Howell Township, resolution granting minor res sub subdivision approval and with ancillary bulk variance relief. Um, we we cannot order. vote on this, so this will be on hold. Case number SP1104, 96 Industrial Court, LLC, resolution granting final major site plan. Eligible voters. Greenfield, myself, Fisher, and that's it. Motion. Make a motion. I'll make a motion. Second. A motion and a second, Mr. Greenfield. Yes. Councilwoman Fisher. Yes. 
And Chairman Mercer. Yes. Mer uh, motion carries with resolutions memorialized. Next we have case number SP-1107, 9 North Realty, LLC. This will, is, will be on hold as well, not enough voters. Next one we have is case number SD-3007, Yvette Brothers, LLC. Resolution denying minor subdivision with ancillary bulk variance relief. Eligible voters, Greenfield and myself. Make a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. <laughs> Motion is second. Uh, Mr. Greenfield? Yes. And Chairman Mercer? Yes. Motion carries resolutions memorialized. Okay, and then we have case number SD3011, Lisniak. I hope I said that right. Properties LLC, resolution grinding minor subdivision approval with ancillary bulk variance and design waiver relief. Eligible voters, myself, Withers, Rebel, and Fisher. Motion? I'll make a motion. Second. Motion and a second. Mr. Withers? Yes. Mr. Rebell? Yes. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. And Chairman Mercer? Yes. Motion carries resolution to memorialize. Then we have case number SD3015, Neil and Monica Slattery. Resolution granting submission, sub, granting submission waivers. Eligible voters, myself, Withers, Rebell. And Mrs. Fisher. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Motion and a second. Mr. Withers? Yes. Mr. Rebell? Yes. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. And Chairman Mercer? Yes. Motion carries resolutions memorialized. Next we have case number SP1126-4461, Route 9, Realty LLC, resolution granting submission wa waivers. Eligible voters, myself, Withers, Rebell, and Councilman Fisher. A motion. I'll second. A motion and a second. Mr. Withers? Yes. Mr. Rebell? Yes. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. And Chairman Mercer? Yes. Motion carries resolutions memorialized. Next we have case number SP1116, Jersey Central Power and Light, resolution granting submission waivers. Eligible voters, myself, Withers, Rebell, and Councilwoman Fisher. Motion. I'll make a motion. Second. The motion is second. Mr. Withers? Yes. Mr. Rebell? Yes. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. And Chairman Mercer? Yes. Motion carries resolutions memorialized. Next we have submission waivers. Uh, that first one was worth development. Okay. The attorney had another hearing at six, so he's going to be late if we can skip him and do him okay. after. Okay. Um, so next one, case number SD3015, Avraham Weinman, preliminary and final major subdivision and with ancillary variance relief. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. Kenneth Pape on behalf of your applicant. This is a request for waivers, and as is your procedure, we previously reviewed the waiver request with your engineer, and it's my understanding that he's prepared to make recommendations to you this evening. Mr. Vice Chairman, members of the board, we have our review letter dated June 13th, 2024, where the submission waivers are outlined under number three in our report. Based upon review, I take no exception to the waivers as requested for purposes of deeming the application complete. Okay. Go right to a motion then, right, to approve? Mm -hmm. Okay. Make a motion. Motion to approve. Pardon me? Motion to approve. Okay. I'll second. A motion and a second. Mr. Greenfield? Yes. Mr. Withers? Yes. Mr. Rebell? Yes. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. And Chairman Mercer? Yes. Motion Thank you. carries. Thank you. Thank you. And here it's Okay, so we Mr. go back. Everybody. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? Good timing. Come right up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I appreciate it. Case number SD 2998F, Wadsworth Development LLC, Ramtown Estates, final major subdivision. Uh, Mr. Chairman, as soon as I catch my breath, it's Michael <laughs> Herbert of the uh, law firm of Parker McKay on behalf of the Wadsworth Development. 
Mr. Vice Chairman, members of the board, we have a review letter dated May 30th, 2024, where the submission waivers are outlined under number three in our report. Based upon review, take no exception to uh, the, uh, make no exception to the waivers as requested for purposes of deeming the application complete. Any questions? If, motion? I'll make a motion. A second. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Greenfield? Yes. Mr. Withers? Yes. Mr. Rebell? Yes. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. And Chairman Mercer? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, members. I uh, had to work really hard tonight, so I, uh, I do appreciate your time. Yep. Have, thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> work hard to get here, right? Yeah. Yeah. 195 is the time. Oh, I know it well. All right, last on the waivers, we have case number SP1127, Diversified Acquisitions, LLC, Preliminary and Final Major Site Plan with Ancillary Variance Relief. Good evening, my name is Matthew Posada of the law firm Sills, Commons & Gross, and I represent Diversified Acquisitions. We have had an opportunity to re review CME's report and also have a conversation with this board's engineer regarding those waivers. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we do have a review letter dated June 21st, 2024, where the submission waivers are outlined under number three in the report. The applicant has already provided a majority of those submission waivers within the last week or so and are requesting submission waivers from 3A for checklist item number five, 3B for checklist item number 17. three E for checklist item number 14 and three M for checklist item number 64. Based on our, our review, we take no exception to granting <coughs> those waivers for completeness. Any questions? Motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Greenfield? Yes. Mr. Withers? Yes. Mr. Rebell? Yes. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. And Chairman Mercer? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now we're going to go to applications before the board. First one we have is case number SP 1126 461 Route 9 Realty LLC, preliminary and final major site plan with ancillary variance and design waiver relief. Chairman, may I begin? You may. Yes, thank you. Mr. Chairman, board members, good evening. Kenneth Pape of the firm Heilberg and Pape on behalf of your applicant 4461 Realty. This is an application for preliminary Can final. Can't hear. Really? Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is an application for preliminary and final major site plan approval for an existing shopping center that's been part of the Howell community for 50 or more years. It has served your, this community well. It's, it's tired and in, certainly in need of, of some rehabilitation. We're hoping that you find that the rehabilitation that's being offered is substantial and will be a benefit and an improvement. Before I begin the substantive presentation, if I would ask if your um, secretary or attorney would confirm receipt of our notices and confirm that the board has jurisdiction for us to proceed. Yes, the notice is in order. Thank you. 
This is an application seeking to renovate, refurbish an existing shopping center. The existing shopping center is right here just north of us on Route 9, 4461. Your applicant is going to propose a number of improvements. There's no stormwater management system. There is proposed a modern stormwater management system. The landscaping is in need of some attention. You're going to hear that we're prepared to modify the landscaping, the work with Ms. Spiro. The circulation on site needs work. The, the site is in, I don't know say dire need, but it's in need of attention. Uh, you'll, we went to your fire chief to work with him on the circulation plan, and we're pleased that he uh, issued a positive report. Mm -hmm. And then you'll also hear from our architect who has uh, created a very attractive building. The building currently is its last use uh, before our client purchased it in October of 2022. It was a furniture store. The property exists without any restrictions or requirements on its use. We're proposing that the building be used for two types of uses related to each other. One is a home improvement related business and the other is home furnishings. We're not looking for general retail. We're not looking to have restaurants or anything else other than home furnishings and home improvements. Our client who owns the property does business as House of Granite and he would be the primary tenant in the building. He designs um, granite and marble uh, um, um, surfaces. He, this, what makes this building special for him is that there is an opportunity to not only have a showroom, but immediately adjacent to the showroom behind, there is a space that's adequate for storage of stones, so st everything can be stored inside, and there's also adequate space for there to be fabrication. Before we filed this application, we secured from Matt Howard a ruling that this was a permitted use because the fabrication was an ancillary use to the primary retail uh, showroom. Our client will also ha also has entered into a lease for a furniture store next door. We've got one one that's left. That's that. We also are increasing the number of parking stalls. Although we are asking for variance relief, we're increasing by about 35% the parking that's there. Mm -hmm. And you'll hear that with the restrictions on the use, the history of this property, and the increase in parking, that we're comfortable asking for that relief. Four witnesses to present to you. I hope that we can be succinct. I think they came very organized. The first witness is Louis Zogner, a professional engineer who's prepared the plans. He'll introduce the property with an aerial photograph and then go right to a site plan. We'll go through the technical elements of the site plan and address your staff's reports. The second witness who will testify is Stephen Radosti. He's the architect who designed the new facade for the building. He'll also take us through the interior floor plan to demonstrate that there's one to four tenants, that that's the maximum number of tenants. The, second, the third witness is Scott Kennel, our traffic expert, who will take us through the circulation and the adequacy of parking. And our final witness is Christine Caffone. She is a professional planner, most often before your zoning board, but here this evening she's to assist us in the presentation of the bulk variance relief, the lion's share of which is associated with the existing building, because we're just working with an existing mm -hmm. building. With that too windy introduction, Mr. <laughs> Chair, I'd ask if we could have Mr. Lewis Zugner sworn. We'll share his credentials and go into the substantive presentation. Please. Right. In the testimony you're about to provide, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Proceed. Mr. Zugner, please share with the board and the public your professional and ed education background. Certainly. My name is Lewis Zugner, Z U E G N E R. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of New Jersey, as well as several other states, graduate of Virginia Tech, um, founder of the firm Mid-Atlantic Engineering, and I've been practicing for over 25 years and certified, uh, accepted in front of numerous boards, zoning and planning boards. May I ask, is your license in good standing today? It is. And were you responsible for the plans that are going to be presented to the board this evening? I am. Would you take a few moments to identify the exhibits that you'd like Ms. Rubano to have available to you, and then we can start with your substantive presentation. Uh, certainly. We submitted uh, two PDFs, and the ones that I uh, would like to use, one is labeled Aerial Exhibit, 
not the overall, but just the aerial. Mm -hmm. And the other then would be the site rendering. Put that up here as well. They've already been marked as well. Thank you. Then if you would begin by taking us to the property, if you could describe the property's location, tell us its size, its zone, give us a little background before we go into the presentation of the site plan. Certainly, and this board's really meant just to acquaint you with where we are. Uh, in this case, probably simpler than some other applications. You can see our site. Uh, outlined on this aerial exhibit. Route 9 goes up and down through the middle of this board or plan. Uh, our site is outlined in white. And if you look below our site, just south on Route 9, you can see where we are tonight, municipal building. So we're just north of this location. And what is the zone of the property? Uh, we are in the HD1 highway development zone. Uh, you can see the commercial sites of course, up and down Route 9, and then residential to the right on that board or behind our site. Guys, I think the board is well aware of the site. Can we just get to it? Sure. Let's, following the suggestion of Ms. Beam, let's go right to the presentation of the site plan elements. Please switch, switch exhibits. This board is a compilation of plans we submitted in the site plan and color it up so that it's easy to follow. Uh, our site, uh, block 35.82, several lots, 43, 44, and 4501, totals 3.89 acres. As a quick overview of what you're seeing here uh, and what Mr. Pape introduced, it's an outdated building. Uh, the infrastructure is in need of improvement, and that's uh, what's before us tonight. That's the application. Uh, providing updated stormwater. Uh, we're paving certain gravel areas that were behind the proper or behind the building to create complete and adequate circulation. Those areas uh, were in need of improvement, and we're doing that. Uh, the building's being improved, but not expanded. Uh, we're increasing parking, and I can get into the details of that if that's acceptable, Mr. Pate. But I, just before we do, I want to make two points. The first point is that back of the building that looks like a backwards capital F. That's the opportunity that attracted our client to this building. The front of the building is the retail area where the show rooms would be, but that backwards capital F is the opportunity to store the materials indoors and to fabricate and be directly connected to the showroom. Just want to make that point. And I also wanted to make this point. We have we've made certain uh, asphalt improvements, as Mr. Zugner just indicated. Prior to the meeting, your engineers have asked that we consider doing a greater amount of paving. Um, we have no issue at all with those recommendations. I'd ask that we defer to a meeting in the field with your engineers, and we'll follow their good guidance. But what we show is what we thought was enough, but if more is necessary, so be it. Okay. Uh, and just to follow up on that, where you pointed out the uh, more commercial portion of the building in the rear, so I'll talk my way through, you can see vehicle parking around the building, primarily in the front uh, near Route 9, but there are loading spaces sort of hidden behind the building in the rear that connect to that uh, part of the building. But if you could take us through site plan elements. Ken, before you move on from that, sure. so I don't take exception to them working with Laura's office in terms of mm -hmm. the pavement, but that's not, Lewis, that's not going to put us in a coverage issue, is it? Surface over surface. No, so we're... we're um, no, it won't. Percentage. Yeah. Right. We'll Perfect. That, I we'll, just wanted to make we'll, sure yeah. because we can't, after the fact, approve a variance. So as long as whatever is going to be happening does not require variance relief, I think it's perfectly fine to work on that after the fact. Thank you. Thanks for the clarification. It's going to be repairing re existing surfaces. Okay. If you take us through, I think we'll do the grading drainage. If you take us through in your order. Sure. Uh, starting with sort of the concept of circulation and parking, uh, of course it is in many ways a similar layout. Um, we are increasing the vehicle parking spaces. So at the site as it sits now has 44 and we're go uh, going to have 72 as designed, so a significant increase in spaces. Uh, also those spaces were slightly undersized in their current condition, so once we've re 
done the site, they will be 9 feet by 19 feet and comply with the dimensions. I mentioned we have six loading spaces at the rear of the building. You can see those sort of you know, back in the, the loading area behind. I think what's most important to the circulation we mentioned on repaving is that it is improved. So we're creating adequate 360 degree circulation around the building. Uh, the intent with loading vehicles is that they would come in left of this building into the loading area and go back out that way, but they can easily make it all the way around the building and that's also important to know in terms of emergency vehicles. And we did work with your fire chief to make him comfortable with how circulation worked around the building. Uh, lanes uh, have been widened for circulation, so they're now all compliant. They're uh, all around the building, so uh, 25 feet minimum, in some cases wider for the truck circulation and back. Uh, there is one item of relief, and it's related to the existing building and right-of-way. So the parking aisle uh, below the building, towards Route 9, where we have one level of parking that's slightly undersized, uh, we believe it still works and is compliant, and frankly, can't be modified because of the DOT right-of-way. Um, I would also note in terms of circulation, uh, in terms, I think of it as pedestrian circulation, we are adding sidewalk along the frontage at Route 9. And you can see that in a lighter color at the bottom of that plan. Uh, if I were to jump to concept of... Before you just ask, before you just sidewalk. Relief is necessary because you're not connecting the sidewalk to the site. Are you planning on providing sidewalk from the right-of-way to the building? Uh, that was not part of the proposal. It's an um, a item that we could, we could address. We could make that connection. I, I think we should, okay. you know, depending on what's going to go in there. I mean, I know they have some guaranteed tenants, but I think that would be a good uh, adjustment. Would it be a combination of sidewalk and pedestrian striping on the parking lot? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, so a sidewalk to the edge of the, the, the grass. And you could do it any way, like anywhere you want, Lewis. Oh. It doesn't have to be like in the middle or whatever. It just wherever you think is most appropriate. Right. I understand the concept to make yes. the connection. Yes. Hundred percent. So committed. Okay. Uh, Grading is relatively simple in this existing site. Essentially, um, other than enough grading to make the paving work in the back, it's staying the same. Uh, we are updating stormwater management. We're creating, you can see in a, a light green corner at the back of the property or the top right, we're constructing a stormwater infiltration basin, which will be compliant with current rules, uh, bring a modern element to the stormwater design. Uh, we have uh, worked with the, your engineer's office. Of course, we would continue to do so, but we believe from a stormwater perspective, we've satisfied their concerns. Mm -hmm. If they still have comments, we'd be happy to work with them. Uh, I think let's make these like, really important points. Stormwater system where there isn't any, stormwater system that is modern, stormwater system that's compliant with the applicable state and town regulations, but I think it's also important, stormwater system owned, maintained by the property owner, no burden on the town, and that there's a recorded operations and maintenance manual that creates in perpetuity the private responsibility to maintain the system. All true, yes. Okay. Just think those are all important mm -hmm. for the record and for the board to know. And uh, if, if I could jump in there regarding stormwater, um, as you discussed, we do have numerous uh, technical review comments. Um, if you could agree to working uh, with our office to address those comments. Lewis? I would be happy to do so, yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Sure. And we've had the opportunity. Your staff makes themselves available to us in technical meetings, so your, the reports were given to us. Mm -hmm. We've had the opportunity to meet with them, so we're not making empty promises. We've worked all of these. We've discussed all of these with them. Okay. If I may, I think we'll go to... Uh, so... Uh, to just touch on uh, trash and recycling elements for the site, uh, there is uh, proposed at the rear of the site where it wouldn't be seen, would be just to the left of where I described the stormwater basin, a enclosure for a dumpster that would be within a masonry enclosure. Uh, there's also uh, 
proposed uh, container that we would have outside of the loading bay for, uh, and you might be able to describe it in detail, but some of the scrap that comes out of the stone process gets recycled. And so there would be a container there for that, those uh, scrap elements of marble or granite that mm -hmm. could then be taken away from the site. Mm -hmm. I failed to identify my client who's here this evening. Joel Reisman is, if you could stand, Joel. Joel Reisman is House of Granite, and we've interviewed him extensively, and he shared with us that there's no garbage that comes out of, there's garbage that comes out of garbage, it's garbage, but the stone is all Removed. collected and it is re repurposed. So that's what that specific container mm -hmm. would be for. But, but then, I mean, you're going to have paper and other products that Absolutely. require the enclosure, correct? And that's yeah. Yeah, correct. There's all those are two separate elements. The, the stone recycling container yes. is also a standard dumpster within a solid enclosure on the site. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, landscaping and there's a woodlands management plan here. So you can see of course where we've constructed the basin at the rear. Uh, there are proposed plantings, uh, landscaping back there. There is some tree removal there as well. And we've gone through, there are proposed 62 trees to be planted, but that falls short of the required number in the Woodlands Management Plan. So there is a o owed amount of trees. Mm -hmm. I think Ms. Spiro shared with us some guidance and direction, which we found to be excellent, and we, I'll put on the record. And, there was an indication that there's room for more trees, so put more trees on there. We'll mm -hmm. put more trees <laughs> on there. There's also a recommendation that we work with an understory under the trees that are there, and that we, we would come up with an understory plan and, and additional planting with Sherry telling us where it goes. Okay. So I see her shaking her head. Shaking her head. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the understory element is important because the rear of the site is a 50-foot buffer that exists. Mm -hmm. That's all existing trees. But as we perform some of this work, we want to make sure that while well, it would be outside that buffer, but that it is clearly planted with understory and an effective buffer. There's also landscaping re requested or the, across the front of the property. As you can see, across the front of the property, we don't own anything except the building, the parking lot, and the driveway. The lands that are green are owned by the state of New Jersey as part of the right-of-way. However, we are going to go to the Department of Transportation to ask them for permission to install a sidewalk. And what we were pre are prepared to do is to also ask that they allow us to plant in their right-of-way. It would be low plantings, and we, I believe that if we carried with us Shari Spiro's recommendations for landscaping in that area, and if we carried with us a resolution from this board indicating that was a, re a preferred element, I believe that the DOT would work with us. So we make that commitment to carry that to the DOT and to ask them mm -hmm. for permission to landscape their property in front of us. As a, a reuse of a property, that's really the extent of uh, my description of what we're proposing. There's, a, there's some lighting fixtures in here that are the type of lighting fixtures that the township does not favor. To the extent that we are asked to replace those lighting fixtures with down LED lighting mm -hmm. fixtures, if we could make that commitment. We can, yes. That is the presentation of Mr. Zugner. Other than to say, Mr. Zugner, you've reviewed the reports of staff. Are you comfortable advising the board that you've made yourself familiar with them, that you can and you will address the technical requirements in those staff reports? I'm confident we can meet any open conditions. Okay. Nothing further, Mr. Zugner. He's available to you and to your staff at this time. So before I, um, I do have one question. The, um, I see the parking spaces are right up against the building. Bollard. Bollard, yes. You got it. Go ahead. You got it. Bollard's across the floor. Or some kind of, you know, the, the car bumpers that they, the concrete car bump, something. Well, the bumpers are not permitted. Not permitted, they need okay. The All right, thank are like you. like a big landscaped yeah. I defer uh, the, the, planter or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's but Bollard, yes, okay. Uh, you see where they're, they're, you know, very close. So anybody running through the, you know, storefront, you don't want that. I also wanted to jump in and ask a question regarding the loading operations for the site, uh, design vehicle, and how uh, items would be loaded and unloaded uh, at the rear of the site. Mr. McNeil, with permission, 
Scott Cannell is prepared to go through that movement when he testifies. Okay. So All right, thank you. So we will not lose that point. Okay. Any other questions? A quick question about the basin. Has the uh, appropriate um, test pits, infiltration testing, in accordance with the NJ Stormwater BMP manual been performed at this time? And if so, are the results... Uh, is the basin right-sized for the stormwater runoff for the site per those results? And that might play into the comments you have. So th that is exactly a comment. Additional soil testing will be required to confirm the permeability rate of the subsoil, as well as confirm that it has an adequate number of test pits. Um, so, yeah, that is a comment that we, we can address or that we will address with the applicant's engineer. Thank you. Okay. Councilwoman, so Anything? No. Open it up for the public. Unless I'm, um, any of the other professionals? No, I'm good with this witness. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm okay as well. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, so yeah. while he's still here, we'll just open it up to the public, and then sure. then we'll do it that Who's way. That so going? anybody from the public? I see nobody standing. We'll move on. Thank you. Okay. And with permission, Mr. Chair, we'll go to Steve Radosti, our architect. Okay. Mr. Zogner will remain with us through the re remainder of the evening. Okay. And Mr. Radosti, if you could stand to be sworn. All right. In the testimony you're about to provide, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Mr. Rodosti, please share with all of us your education and professional background. So I'm a licensed registered architect in the state of New Jersey. Um, I went to New Jersey Institute of Technology for Architecture, graduated in 1992. I became licensed in the state in 1996. I'm a principal at Perez and Rodosti Associates in charge of uh, operations. Uh, I presented in front of dozens of boards throughout the state of New Jersey, including this board. Okay. And your license is in good standing? Yes, it is. The plans that we're about to review with you, or is this your work product? Yes, it is. I'm going to ask if you could, in a narrative fashion, describe what your responsibility was. Be, please be certain to identify the improvements that you've made to the building, and if you could also, before we are finished, if you could take us inside and identify the four tenants. Yes. Thank you. So the existing building is a one-story retail building of approximately 46,671 square feet. Uh, this building has been very visible structure in Howell for generations and has served its intended purpose for years. But now the building is old and it's tired and it's time for a refresh. Uh, the new owners have requested that I give the building a new life with a complete facelift as well as to divide the building up into four home improvement or home furnishing retail tenants. Uh, one of the spaces being for the owners themselves uh, with their House of Granite retail store with slow, uh, stone slab design and fabrication. As the architect, the client requested that I redesign the building to make it more usable as well as more attractive from Route 9. The first thing that we proposed in the new, in the new design was to remove all the various signs the graphics, the awnings, and the flags. Uh, the next thing was to make the front facade more visibly organized so that each of the potential tenants had a visually attractive storefront that defined each of their entrances. We did this by utilizing the existing masonry pilasters and adding new finishes and horizontal and vertical elements. Uh, we added new high-end finishes that would hint at the stone and tile store use and we also uh, we added ceramic rain screen panels at the base of the walls that would give it a rich feel and visually anchor the base of the building to the ground. In addition to that, we used vertical wood slats, stucco, wood look fiber cement panels, and trim bands to contrast the ceramic panels and to aesthetically divide the building facade. At each of the potential entrances, we added a new aluminum and glass door fronts with low E glazing. We also added a new cantilevered uh, metal canopies that accentuate the horizontal trim lines. Uh, 
Mr. Chair, if I could just interject, mm -hmm. and Steve, I don't mean to interrupt you. Sure. We've been working together for years. Steve always does a fantastic job on the architecture. He understands what we're looking for here in Howell. We've been working together on this on this building for quite a while now. I think the facade along Route 9 is fantastic. I think it's a tremendous upgrade to what is there now. There's a couple little tweaks that I would make to some of the other facades that have some continued blank walls that Steve has committed to working with my office. If you guys were to approve this tonight, we could do that as part of resolution compliance. I don't mean to cut you off, mm -hmm. but I don't know that we need to go through every right. architectural detail. Right. The board doesn't generally get into that level of detail. Right. If you're okay trusting me, I will make sure that the building looks okay. <laughs> and this this building is in that refresh zone, correct? On, correct. On right, right. You know, and okay. so, right. but it is a marked improvement yeah. over what is there oh, now. The, yeah. the front facade is fantastic. Yeah. There's a couple little tweaks to the other three facades that we mm -hmm. need to make to just keep it in keeping with what we've mm -hmm. done in other buildings and Steve is well aware of the type of things that I'm looking for and has been very easy to work with from my office so if you guys trust me I can make sure that the building is going to look fantastic good thank you Jennifer yes we, we will do that <laughs> I think that brings our architectural testimony to a conclusion with questions he's available to the board <laughs> and the professionals for questions if there are any any Nobody? Yep. So we'll okay. make one, Open to the public. I'll make one point. Well, okay. You, that the building is designed to accommodate up to four tenants. One, two, three, or four tenants. And, and that would be a restriction that we're comfortable with. Right. It, it's designed for home furnishings and home improvement businesses. So I imagine the bigger space is going to be the their space, correct? The granite space? The northern, the northern <laughs> space is the... Is the northern, okay. The northern, well, so attached to the warehouse. Gotcha. Attached to that okay. big capital F building. Gotcha. In the back. Okay. If I may piggyback on that mm -hmm. question, so so far we have two tenants. We do. We have the the owner of the building, and we have a fifteen thousand square foot furniture store right in the middle of the building. Hmm. So we have the same tenant, owner. Different owner. Different owner. Okay. So we, yeah. And Mr. Howard has signed off and allowed them to to begin their their fit up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Public? Anybody from the public? No? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Scott Kennel is our traffic expert. I know that he has testified before the board before. Mm -hmm. I would ask that he be sworn. We'll share his credentials and make a presentation on the adequacy of parking and circulation. All right. Any testimony you're about to provide, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yeah. Mr. Kennel, if you could just identify to the board your background and your qualifications right. as a traffic expert. Yeah, and Scott Kennel, K-E-N-N-E-L, with McDonough and Ray Associates, located in Manasquan. I have over uh, close to 40 years now of traffic and transportation planning experience. I've appeared before this board, as well as 100 other municipalities, in providing uh, uh, traffic testimony. Okay. And I'm going to ask if you could... Um, have you, were you part of the design team and were you part of the inspection of the property and prepared the report that's before the board this evening? Yes, I've been involved in this project for over a year and our office prepared a traffic statement dated March 18, 2024, which details the traffic projections, circulation, and uh, the parking that uh, we're proposing for the site. Mr. Chairman, I ask that the board accept Mr. Kennel and allow him to testify as a traffic expert this evening. Thank you. He's accepted. If you would, I think the, the focus that we have is the on-site circulation and the improvements. Be certain to identify the loading areas and the circulation associated with the loading areas, and then the parking that exists and the parking that would exist if the site was approved, and we'd like to know your opinion about its adequacy. All right. I guess I, there we go. Uh, well, as Mr. Zugner testified, uh, we're doing substantial on-site improvements uh, that are, is going to improve circulation, specifically in the northeast quadrant of the uh, site. We're, at, we're converting what is just a gravel access road to a paved 28-foot wide two-way uh, circulation aisle to provide access to the easterly and uh, side of the building as well as to the loading areas. Again, with that design, it allows traffic trucks to enter in on the northerly side of the building. 
as well as to be able to exit utilize the north side of the building so that we minimize uh, truck conflicts with the, past, with the parking spaces along the west side and south side of the building. So in my opinion, that's a tremendous enhancement to what exists today. Uh, the Fire Bureau has reviewed the plan, as Mr. Papis testified, so they're satisfied with the circulation patterns to adequately serve this building. And as far as the parking, as Mr. Papis testified, this is going to be geared towards low intensive retail uses. Uh, I'm sure many of you have been to uh, granite stores or lighting stores, and it, it, the space is generally occupied by inventory with a basically a, you know, low uh, turnover of customers. Our client expects anywhere from zero some days to up to six customers that come into the store, and many of those are by appointment. So we're not, it's not a high traffic generator, high parking generator, such as uh, other retail type uses. Uh, based on his operations, which he has as many as 26 employees, not all of them drive, many of them carpool or get dropped off, and we would expect a, a, a parking need of approximately 20 for the um, House of Granite employees. And then as I mentioned, they have uh, as many as six customers a day, so that's not a big uh, demand. And then when you look at the other uh, tenant, potential tenant that's going to occupy two of the spaces for as a furniture store, that again is a very low parking generator. On, during the weekday, they may generate as many as 10 uh, vehicles, where on the weekend it's in the range of maybe 20 vehicles. So again, it's a low parking generator. And then space A, or the one un, un, um, identified tenant or space on the north side is approximately 7,000 square feet. Again, the nature of the use would generate uh, plus or minus uh, 10 vehicles. And again, when you take all that into consideration, the par peak parking demand is going to be 40 to 45 vehicles, and we have 72 parking spaces. So based on the restrictions that are being considered and the type of uses, it's my opinion that the parking supply of 72 spaces is more than adequate to serve uh, the known and, and, and future tenants of this, uh, of this building. If I may, just to, I want to make certain points. So the building currently has functioned with 44 spaces and no restrictions on use. We're proposing restrictions on use and we're increasing the 44 to 72. Does that influence your opinion that the parking is adequate? Yes, most, more def most definitely, based on my office research and industry standards for these type of retail uses. Again, it's, it's my opinion the 72 spaces are more than adequate to serve the anticipated demand. Building's not growing, and for decades, buildings survived with 44 parking spaces, correct? Correct. If you could, cir circulation, so w if you could identify how a vehicle enters the site and gets into the loading dock and how if the vehicle leaves the loading dock um, and, and exits the site. Yeah, basically trucks that would access the loading area would enter at the northerly, I don't know, I don't think it's going to work. It's not working. Well, there we go. Would, would utilize this driveway, the northerly driveway, and circulate uh, okay. in, a, in a clockwise pattern and then access the loading docks that are here and then there are some other larger parking spaces uh, at this location. I'd also want to make a note that based on the House of Granite operation, granite deliveries are anywhere from two to three a week and they're generally by flatbed trucks mm -hmm. that have a boom on them similar Small. to sheetrock type of delivery vehicles. Yeah, smaller so, vehicle. The, so, the, yeah, it wouldn't be tractor trailers, it would mm -hmm. be but but it, but it, with the furniture store, they would have tractor trailers. Correct, and, and this site has been designed to accommodate tractor trailers. Yes, so sir. no trucks can get in that that first southern one. It's not intended for them to right. use that. Uh, yeah, I, so you're going to the second one. Because right. you can't make that turn in there, right? Not the first one. Well, no, and then again, it's right. it's going to be that's something that has to be coordinated with the owners of the businesses that the, the mm -hmm. deliveries are made at the northerly driveway. 
and signage would be I was going to say, is there yeah. signage you yeah. could put up? Yeah. <laughs> I think that yeah, the that's reason gonna be. that the driveway system is around the building is, is Fire Chief Prochnow, mm -hmm. who wanted to make certain he could get around the building. So yeah. we made certain that he could. So, so if you're coming in with it. I just want to make sure nobody goes in that entrance with we'll, the we'll, truck. We'll, we'll, we'll work with NJDOT yeah. and add the proper signage, as well as your professional team. <coughs> Trash removal vehicles, can they circulate and get to the, the dumpsters? Yes. And a, a vehicle to come and pick up the container with the stone remnants can circulate? That, yes, they can. With this extensive, expansive mm -hmm. paved area in the back, there's plenty of room for them to maneuver and access the the containers. So a summary of your professional opinion is more than adequate parking, adequate, more than adequate on-site circulation for the anticipated vehicles, including an articulated tractor trailer, mm -hmm. and the uh, property accommodates the turn, turning movements associated with loading and unloading. Yes, they do. I don't think I have any more questions for you, Mr. Kennel. Mr. Chair and members of the board, Mr. Kennel is now available to you and your staff. No, I think just going back to that comment, I know you know the car parking is not an issue. It's the you know it's the higher you know the tractor trailer issue. They're going to that second one, passing the front entrance. Um, so there's signage is going to be critical. So I don't have any other questions on that. We'll agree to work with your yeah. staff to come up right. with the appropriate signage. Uh, Jen, anybody? Yeah. So, go ahead. Go ahead. I have nothing. Uh, I have nothing. So, I uh, okay. just had a quick question on the spaces in the rear. The 16 spaces, will those be designated uh, entirely for employees? Employees will be directed that that's where they must park, but there won't be a restriction on anyone else parking there if they want to. But, but okay. employees will be directed to the rear parking spaces. And the lighting is going to be another discussion. Mr. Z Mr. Zugner testified right. that the lighting will be amended mm -hmm. to remove the offensive fixtures, mm -hmm. replace them with LED downward lighting fixtures. For all, okay. Yeah. Any, any other questions? Open to the public. You're not coming, okay. I saw her standing up, sorry. No, no, I'm not Okay. <laughs> You're next, gotcha, okay. All right, close to the public. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. And our fourth and final professional witness is Christine Cafon. This existing site, this existing building comes with a set of smoke variances, almost all of which are pre-existing, and we've asked that Ms. Cafon address those we could begin with having Ms. Gaffone sworn. Yeah. And a testimony you're about to provide, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right. You proceed. If you would, Ms. Gaffone, share with us your education and professional background. Yes. Good evening, uh, Chair and members of the board. My name is Christine Gaffone. I'm a licensed professional planner. I've been testifying as such for 28 years in the state of New Jersey, and I have a master's degree in city and regional planning. My licenses are current and valid. I've testified here in Howell and about 450 other planning and zoning boards throughout the state. I teach planning and zoning courses, and I'm a court appointed. Mr. Chair, Chair she's before us like every single meeting. <laughs> <laughs> good to go. A lot. We're good. Thank you. If you could identify your responsibility to the board, if you could identify the bulk variance relief that we're requesting and take us to the proofs that this board needs to hear to justify granting that relief. Certainly. So uh, the, the use as is proposed is permitted in the HD1 zone. So we are asking for some relief that results almost exclusively to existing conditions on the property. The southernmost cor corner of the building is set at about 41.6 feet, where it needs to be 60. The northern uh, is a little closer uh, to a little further back. It's at 50, where it needs to be 60. Those are existing conditions on the property not impacted by this application. Similarly, we have improvements closer than 50 feet, as well as the buffer that is also existing conditions, the less than 50 foot buffer on the property, uh, predominantly those exists uh, on, on the front, uh, southern, and northern portions of the property. We are also asking a waiver for the number of parking spaces, as Mr. Kennel just provided. So statutorily, the board can grant the relief under either the C1 section of the statute, which relates to a hardship or lawful pre-existing structures on the property, 
or the C2 section of the statute where you advance one or more purposes of the land use law. Because the, stat the structures on the property are lawful pre-existing structures, I think the board could invoke the C1 section of the statute. But in the absence of that C1 criteria, if you don't feel that a hardship is met, I believe you can grant the relief under the C2 section of the statute under criteria G of the municipal land use law, which talks about sufficient space and appropriate locations for a variety of uses. I think that this is a, a great use for this site, and I think it aligns perfectly with the stated purpose of the HD1 section at 188-77 of the Howell Township Land Use Ordinance. That section of the ordinance reads, the purpose of the HD1 is to provide for a highway-oriented development in the Route 9 corridor on lots larger than permitted in the HD zone. Also important to the Route 9 corridor is that when you last re-examined your master plan in 2019, you incorporated all of your goals from the 2017 plan, but you did introduce one new one, which was to encourage new businesses and industries to locate along the township's highway corridors, which will grow the economy of Howell and provide new services and potential employment and opportunities for residents. So I think that given the fact that the, the township in their master planning documents has encouraged growth and development here. You can look at this as G, sufficient space and appropriate location. I also think it's an efficient use of the land, uh, which is criteria M of the land use law. Mm -hmm. Statutorily, we would only have to invoke one mm -hmm. to meet our C2 pro proofs, but I think we are so certainly solid with criteria G and M. Um, no variance, whether it's C1 or C2, should be granted if the board doesn't find that the negative criteria is also satisfied. The negative criteria really has two prongs to it, the impact on the public good on the, and the zone plan. Here you heard testimony earlier from our witnesses that we intend to modify and enhance the landscaping to add sidewalks along Route 9 and into the site, to introduce new stormwater management facilities, and to upgrade the facade of the building. All of those things lead me to believe that the variance relief required in conjunction with this application can be granted with no substantial detriment, because that's the test, right? It's not that you have to hold us to the sense that there's no detriment, just that the benefits of the grant outweigh any detriment. So I think we do certainly meet our statutory burden of proof with respect to both the positive and the negative criteria for the grant of all of the relief and waivers associated with this application. Thank you for You're that efficient and thorough presentation. No. Huh? Professionals. I take no exception to the testimony provided. C1, I, I C1, C2. I think this is a positive. Right? Okay, it's right. an existing site. They're cleaning it up. They're making improvements. They're adding stormwater management. The facade is much improved. I think this is a very welcome addition to the Route 9 quarter. I have nothing to say after that. <laughs> no. right. Can't argue. Came up with the master plan, so. That concludes the direct presentation of the applicant to this board. Questions? No questions? Open to the public. I see nobody raising themselves, so, so we will move on. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I'm going to adopt the comments of Jennifer Beam as my closing statement. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring you ice cream. <laughs> Nothing else. I respectfully else. ask that the board consider favorably okay. the preliminary and final site plan with the limited bulk variance and waiver relief as presented. With condition of adding the sidewalk as recommended. And I don't know if we need to adopt the C1, C2. I, so that's, I agree that's, that it probably will qualify under the C1, but Ms. Caffon gave us the C2 criteria. So, so I way, think they're covered either way. Either way, so yes. it doesn't matter. Okay. The condition of we'll meet with Make Sherry and we'll meet with your engineer. Okay. And they're going to work with me on the architecture. And so I think we're ready to make a motion. Make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve it. I'll second. I'll yeah. Mr. Greenfield? Yes. Mr. Withers? Yes. Mr. Rebell? Yes. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. And Chairman Mercer? Yes. Motion carries. Thank, thank you. you. Chairman, members of the board, thank you all. Thank and you. Good night. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, next we have.
Case number SD3014, Neil and Monica Slattery, minor subdivision with ancillary variance and design waiver relief. Mr. Chairman, just before uh, we get started, mm -hmm. I just want to make a point on the record that there was a uh, minor issue with the uh, notice on this application. The uh, applicant relied on the uh, tax assessor's list that was provided, but there was a typo on that list. The uh, there was uh, basically the, the state was wrong. It said New Jersey. The correct state should have been West Virginia. The, um, <laughs> the owner of the property, Lot 6, which is immediately adjacent, had uh, contacted me. She's the uh, one in West Virginia. And she said she understands the application. She's received effective notice and that uh, she has no objection to this application. So we can we've uh, resolved notice and via email confirmed that she... Uh, Okay. waives her 10-day notice uh, in order to uh, be heard tonight. Okay, so we can hear it. Okay. Here. Thank you, Mr. Uh, good evening, Chairman, <clears throat> uh, Councilwoman, members of the board. David Leone, Carton Law Firm, on behalf of the applicants. Um, I was going to ask uh, Mr. Mueller for, the, um, for uh, confirmation that the notice was acceptable, particularly to uh, Ms. Um, Ms. Ricker or Ms. Cheesy, and um, it's already been explained. So, yes. Uh, Council, uh, the uh, planning board has jurisdiction. Correct. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, this is a minor subdivision uh, that seeks some variance relief. Um, it's. I'm hopeful that I'm going to be uh, a little more brief than my learning colleague just before me um, <laughs> in presenting this application. Um, it is a 16,000. I'm sorry. It's a 31,624 square foot lot in the R3 zone. Uh, proposed subdivision into a 15,000 square foot lot and a 16,624 square foot lot. Um, both are going to be uh, residential uses. Um, I would like to call uh, as my first witness with permission of the board, uh, Neil Slattery, the owner of the property. Mr. Leone, you can sit and that is a mic on that table there. Oh, thank you. Just make sure you speak into it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Neil, yeah, would you stand, stand and be sworn? And the testimony you're about to provide, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right, you proceed. So, Neil, you own the property um, that, that's the subject of this application? Uh, that's correct. I own it with my wife, Monica. Okay, and what are you presently doing with that property? Uh, we currently live there. Okay, and uh, what's your intention to do with the uh, subdivision and having a second lot? We're looking to split the lot to uh, give the second lot to our daughter, uh, our son-in-law and our granddaughter. Okay, and what are they going to do with it as far as you know? Um, they, they currently live in Beechwood. They are, as soon as this clears up and they're the official owners, they'll be working on putting up uh, their own residential house and living there. Okay, there are certain uh, code issues that have been addressed uh, by Ms. Beam, the, um, the planner. Uh, in particular, there's one that has to do with a shed that would be on the newly created lot. Um, you cannot have a shed as the primary uh, the, the, the primary building on on a lot. Would you have any problem with moving that shed uh, to your lot during the pendency of the uh, the building of, of your daughter's home? No, not at all. It's current. No, obviously, the whole property is our property, it, and that's just what a lot is. As soon as it splits, I'm t I'll take the shed and put it on on our side. Okay, because the board's concerned that the shed would be sitting there for a long time. Can you give the board an idea of? What time frame you're thinking about uh, building this home for your daughter? Um, well, I would assume that within a year tops, it would be you know taken care of and completed. Okay. Um, so, I Mr. Chair, I would just recommend, and I, I don't mean to cut you off, but this is—I I know you have like a whole litany of people here, and I appreciate your preparedness, but I. I feel like I could probably cut through it for you, if you don't mind. I would greatly appreciate that. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> Mr. Chair. So, put him on the spot. so this is a piece of property on Belmar Boulevard, and it's a through lot, right? So it goes mm -hmm. from Belmar Boulevard to the street immediately behind. Um, there's an existing house on it. They're looking to cut it in half for apparently uh, Mr. Slattery's daughter. It's like a front, there's a front shed, and back property. The shed exists. It is would be on that second lot. I would recommend that within 120 days of perfection of the subdivision, either the shed has to go or it has to be moved. 
I don't think it needs to be done right away because it takes a while to get through mm -hmm. resolution compliance to get the subdivision Perhaps. filed because they can't even file a building permit until all of that's done. So mm -hmm. I don't want to put onus on this resident. Obviously, we're looking to be you know, resident friendly here. Mm -hmm. So I would say within 120 days, it's a fair 120 days of the perfection of the subdivision to either move the shed or remove it. Can you do that? Done. So I would also say the lot is more than double the required, and Brian, I don't mean to steal your thunder either. <laughs> um, the lot is more than double the size of what's required in the zone. It's a 15,000 square foot zone. Mm -hmm. It's over 31,000 square feet. Both lots will be oversized. There's, you know, and you know me, I do not, covered, I, I'm yeah. not an advocate mm -hmm. of creating undersized lots. Mm -hmm. It will meet the dimensional requirements, the frontage, the width, the depth, everything, both lots. The issue is, is that the location of the existing home, um, which um, will require a front yard setback variance, but I think that's existing, right? Because it's there now. And potentially the rear, the, the new lot could potentially have a rear yard setback variance. However, given the fact that this um, applicant is looking to have his daughter live in the house, I'm not thinking that they're going to have a problem with having Another a less than, a, you know, less than normal mm -hmm. rear yard setback. Mm -hmm. There are minor variances. It's a minor subdivision. I see there's a whole lot of boards over there with architectural, <laughs> but it's a, it's, a minor sub, it's a minor subdivision. They don't even really have to show us any improvements. Right, right. They would have to go to the township for plot plan review and get your approvals. Um, but they are seeking that setback variance for the second lot in the event that the whatever design that they put forward would require it, so they don't have to then come back here for mm -hmm. that. Um, I take no exception to what they're asking for. It's a minor subdivision. Mm -hmm. It's a through lot. Actually, it's creating a better situation mm -hmm. because now you don't have two fronts, um, and they are not asking for the lot to be undersized. If they right. were asking to cut at a... 15,000 square foot lot in half, I would have a very different opinion of it. But because he has a double the size, I don't take any exception to what they're asking for. So I don't know if you guys need to hear any additional testimony, but from my perspective, this is a very minor application. Yeah. I don't want to waste everybody's time. Just curious about the, the drive going in. It's going to be one drive and then split off for each dwelling? Cur cur currently, it's a gravel road mm -hmm. gravel driveway coming from mm -hmm. Belmar cutting through to so Shafto. Then, then it'll just split off to each wherever the dwelling is located. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll be yeah. splitting it with yeah. a fence. Yeah. Right. I mean, in yeah. theory, you could legitimately have a driveway off both roadways, correct? Going to each right. house. Correct. You will have theory, ours. Right. Okay. Okay. right. So oh, they'll so have theirs. Right. So we'll front. Okay. Exactly. Got it. Okay. Um, okay. In, in terms of the testimony from Mr. Slattery, that's all I have. If there's anything in, further that needs to be heard with regard to the variances, I do have uh, Mr. Murphy here, who's a professional planner, professional engineer, can address any of those issues if it's necessary. I mean, I don't take exception to what they're asking for. Yeah. I think it's very minor in nature. Can move. So, I mean, yeah. listen, I love Brian, and I've known him for years, <laughs> and he's more than welcome to, to do what he has to do, but I don't feel it's necessary. If you guys are okay, I think they're good. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? questions? No. No? No questions? I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> the best just trying worlds. to be efficient guys yeah like if it was problematic i would let you know and you know that i don't tolerate like ridiculousness or anything but in this particular situation this is a a, a very modest ask and i don't think what they're asking mm -hmm. for is problematic in any way okay so make a w uh, motion for minor subdivision with ancillary variance. Before we do, we just have to open it to public just in case. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. I see nobody standing. We can move on. <laughs> I'll, ma I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll second. For minor subdivision with ancillary variance. Yeah. Got it. The motion is second. Mr. Greenfield? Yes. Mr. Withers? Yes. Mr. Rebell? Yes. Councilwoman Fisher? Yes. And Chairman Mercer. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you, everyone. Executive <laughs> session. We don't need executive. No. Nope. <gasps> There's no master plan update. Like, master we did plan. the master plan last we year. We're, right. we're good to go. Okay. I think there's supposed to be a meeting. 
No. On. I mean, the housing plan, just so you know, the housing plan is going to come around, but that's not until next year. But hmm. we are gearing up for the next round of affordable housing. But other than that, there's no, like, elements that we need to address. No, there's no master plan meeting scheduled for the month of July. No. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Good. Okay. I'll catch you about uh, tournaments. Okay. 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 Thank you all. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. And while we're here, there's nothing scheduled right now for August 1st, and it's too late to notice, so the August 1st meeting will be canceled. That's my, so birth that's my birthday, good. Our <laughs> next <laughs> meeting will be August Thank 15th. You. When? August 15th. 15th, okay. And by the way, my birthday is the next day. <laughs> August 2nd. So expect presents. Like, rock balls, and I'm not, not going to mention who I'm directing that to. And then also singing. <laughs> Rumbles. So, a motion to close the meeting? Motion. All Second. Aye. Aye. We're good. Thank you very much, everyone. So I didn't fumble too much. You did fine. <laughs>